Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today on the channel, we're gonna talk about burying your business. And no, I don't mean that kind of business. I know I'm renowned as the post-apocalyptic toilet paper tablet guru, but that's not what we're talking about today. We're gonna talk about burying survival supplies, building a survival cache. Why on earth would anybody in their right mind, especially this day and age with these hyperinflationary prices, want to bury perfectly good gear in the ground? Well, stick around, because that's what we're gonna talk about. Let's get to it. So why would you wanna build a survival cache in the first place? Well, there's several different types of caches. You can build a cache on your property, which might just be for the purpose of hiding your valuables. You can build what I would call like a perimeter cache, which is something near your property in case you were forced off your property by jackboot thugs in the middle of the night. Or we could do a long range cache, which would be something that was an intermediate between you and your bug out location. So you could put these caches along waypoints to your bug out location, because if you did, for whatever reason, have to bug out on foot, it's impossible to carry enough gear. So if we're talking about actual grid down prepper like scenarios, where maybe there was, there was a nuclear warhead detonated in your city, and maybe you had to evacuate your city because there was just lawlessness riding, the mob was beating down your door, and you had no choice but to forfeit everything in your home. In those conditions, it would be nice to have something buried out there. What I would equate this to, it's like having one of those storage facilities that you take your stuff to and you rent out by the month, only it's in nature and you're the only one with the key. I would advise against using those storage facilities for your preps. You will be at the whim of the owners of those facilities to access your supplies in times of crisis. So the tools you're gonna need for the job are a shovel. I would advise you to get something with a narrower head. It's just gonna be easy for working around roots and a hatchet of some sort. This hatchet is gonna get buried in our cache. Another thing I would recommend you bring, which I didn't bring because I'm an idiot, is gloves. You might have to get in there and do some digging. I didn't bring any of my dogs today to help me out with that. So I would strongly recommend gloves to avoid those blisters. Another thing you should bring is either a backcountry roadmap book where you can actually log the waypoint of where you're gonna bury this stuff, or you can do that like we're gonna do today using GPS. We use an app called the Backcountry Navigator and that is gonna allow us to pinpoint where it is on that map, even independent of GPS signals, even if the grid were to go down and the GPS satellites stop functioning, the map will still be relevant. It's a topographical map with a combination of pictures that we're gonna take of the location. And of course, my memory, we're gonna be able to determine where it's gonna be. Okay, so the bucket that we're gonna be using to make our survival cache is just a food grade bucket. And we have a gamma lid on here just to give it added protection and more structural integrity. This is a, a very thick plastic, so I'm not worried about this decomposing over time or even small critters being able to break into it. We're going to bury it horizontally like this because this is the strongest structure in the universe, a circle, a dome. It's gonna allow the weight of the earth around it to be equally dispersed. This is why the best bunkers in the world are built cylindrical, just like a subway, because it's the strongest way. So I don't wanna have to bury it like this because number one, I'm gonna have to dig deeper, but also because in terms of the actual integrity, it's not gonna be as good. So we're gonna bury it like that. You can use a variety of things to put your supplies in. You could use PVC pipe, that's a popular one. You can actually buy certain products that are specifically made for this purpose that are marketed to preppers. You can even use things like ammo cans. Uh, the reason why I don't like the ammo cans is because number one, they're made of metal. They do have this uh, painted coating protection on them to prevent them from rusting and corrosion. But if you're putting something in the ground, chances are it's gonna corrode a little faster. So there's the risk of rusting out with those. And they're just so small, you can't really fit anything substantial. All right, so we unscrew this gamma lid. What do we have in here? 
we have some camouflage duct tape. Now the reason for this is that inside of this, I have the handle for this bucket. I may not have a backpack when I come across in the future, so I'm gonna want an easy, convenient way to carry this. In conjunction with my cordage, I could even make a backpack that would work, but I do fold up the handle and I put it in there. And I don't want this big red thing to stick out for a thousand miles. So that's why I have this camouflage duct tape so that I can duct tape it. The reason why I don't spray paint this beforehand is because if this is gonna be in the ground, chances are that will rub off. Now you could easily mitigate that issue by wrapping this in a contractor bag that would provide it a little bit of added protection. So it's something to consider. So we have our magnesium fire steel and our uh, fire plugs just to get fire started. The reason why I don't put a lighter in here is if I don't access this for 10 years, then that lighter is possibly gonna be useless and matches will decay over time as well. Probably wouldn't be a factor in here to be honest, but for things like this, best to stick to the most primitive, reliable technology. We have some paracord. We have our AdLens adjustable glasses. I don't know what my visual situation is gonna be if I come across this in the future or somebody else. So if they need a visual aid, they have the adjustable glasses. We have some jute twine. We have a small rain poncho. We have a compass. We have right in the rain notepad. We have a cheap Mora knife. And the only reason why I have this is because this is actually more of a self-defense tool than anything. And for self-defense, for knives, you want them small. You don't want big, you want small. You gotta think prison ship. We have an emergency blanket, camouflage. We have a life straw, which is going to allow us to filter about 4,000 liters of water. We have a Israeli emergency bandage. We have some Mio water flavoring drops. A lot of people don't think the water you're gonna drink, even if you filter it, is probably gonna taste like ass. So this will help make it just a bit more palatable. We do have some aqua tabs for that reason. We have a survival candle. We have a heavy duty emergency blanket. So this is gonna be much thicker than our camouflage. This is just something we're gonna use mostly for concealment. We do have a small crowbar in there. We have a Gerber multi-tool deck of playing cards because why not? We have this old Schrade knife. This is a cheap knife that I can use for batoning, hacking on things, various camp tasks. Another thing that I don't have in here that should be in here would be a stainless steel water canteen so that I could boil water. I do have a small silky pocket boy saw in there. Now the bulk of what we got in here is food, okay? We also have a pair of binoculars as well. Got some homemade freeze-dried food with our Harvest Right. We have some survival tabs. So this is something you can eat on the go. Last 25 years, has a high biological value, lots of micronutrients. So that would be, if we just came across this, we were famished. We needed to do a gradual refeeding to get our nutrients up. We might nibble on these before we really dive into the meat and potatoes of all this stuff here. Then we have a variety of other miscellaneous freeze-dried meals, which are all gonna last 25 years. Another thing you're gonna wanna consider putting in your cache is some silver and some cash. Just because the world has ended doesn't mean people aren't gonna still accept cash for a while. Especially if you're far away from home, you're gonna need something to barter with people. So we have four layers of protection. We have mylar, polypropylene, the plastic, and then we have the ground. Now we don't have any water in here because there's just not enough space for water and there's water in this region. So as long as we have a water filter, then we should be good to go. But if you're doing something like in the desert, then you may well want to store some water. Put a good seal on that. We're ready to go. Now for some obvious legal reasons, we're not going to be bearing any ammunition or firearms. However, with a seven liter food grade bucket, like we're showing you today, you could easily fit takedown bows, uh, bull pups, pistols. However, this goes against the laws in my country and it probably goes against the laws in yours. So only do what is lawful. Now, if we're talking about SHTF without rule of law, I guess it's a no holds barred Mad Max situation. Then I guess people are gonna do what they're gonna do, but I gotta make that disclaimer. We're not bearing anything that's illegal here today. It's very important that if you're planning on bearing a cash, 
but you make sure that you don't have any unexpected company. Fortunately, a lot of people aren't gonna get off their nice cozy quads to go and venture into where we as preppers are willing to go. What do we got here? Okay, so this, something like this is gonna be a problem. Because you know now that there was people who were moving through these woods and they probably were hunters. So this is just one of the things you're gonna wanna be mindful of. If you see any signs of humans in the area, you may not wanna put your cache right beside this. So we are on a slope here, which is gonna get a lot of shade from the trees. We're not gonna to have to worry about erosion because there's some good roots and the slope is gonna ensure that we're not gonna have water pooling up and potentially getting into our supplies and spoiling them. So there's a lot of landmarks in this region that I'm gonna be able to photograph and also commit to visual memory. And I'm gonna be able to easily log this on a a topo map because there is that elevation change. So here we have a down tree, which is gonna take years to decay. We know that this is not going anywhere. And right next to that, we have this bunch of spruce trees, which in at least in this region is something which is not incredibly rare, but it's rare enough in combination with the down tree. So if you do plan on building multiple caches, I would do it with a standard format. So we have our slope on one side and we have our landmark trees on the opposing side. There's gonna be plenty of instances of this in nature where there's a down tree, there's a bunch of trees and right opposite to that is gonna be our cache with our slope. Right in the midst of here, we have this thicket of trees surrounding it. So that's the other thing is that this is well off the beaten path. So we're not gonna to have to worry about animals or people getting nosy. Another thing to be mindful of when you are coming into the space that you're gonna be putting the cache is try not to disturb the surrounding area. Remember, you're trying to leave a minimal amount of sign. Try to leave no trace and minimize any sign that you are ever here. We're gonna try to cut out a segment. Be like a layer of sod. So what we're trying to do is make it so that after we've buried it, we can put this sod layer right back on top and it'll go back into blending into the surroundings. Okay, so what I've done is I've kind of undercut a trench around a circular section here of this top layer, uh, the duff layer. It's a bit of moss, some leaves, some grass, and we're gonna try to lift that up and then after we're done burying the cache, we're gonna put this right back over top of it. And over time, it should just seamlessly transition back into the environment. You won't even know it's here. The benefit of doing that obviously is that it's gonna be more naturally concealed because an experienced hunter who is looking for sign, their eyes are gonna be drawn to those inconsistencies in the environment because they're looking for deer tracks. They're looking for pushed over pieces of grass, broken sticks, signs that something has been in that area. So their eyes are gonna be looking for that. And that's really what I'm concerned about most out here is other hunters finding stuff. I'm not concerned about the average person or even hikers who are seldom gonna leave the path of least resistance, which are the trails. I'm worried about the guy who is looking around in here for something to hunt and whose eyes are gonna be trained to these sorts of things. So. Let's remove this. So it might come off in a couple sections, that's okay. So we got one section here. We got another section here. So to make this easier, we're gonna hack, hack all these roots. You're gonna wanna use an expendable hatchet for this or something that you're not worried about dulling the blade because this is definitely gonna dull the blade, which makes me think I probably should have put a sharpener in my cache. So my cheeky communist cameraman had just said something to me that I hadn't considered until now. So it's a lesson learned. I have all of this soil that I now need to backfill into the hole, but because some of that volume is gonna be occupied by the cache of supplies, I'm gonna be left with a bunch of dirt. So what I should have done 
was brought another bucket of equivalent size to shovel the stuff into so I could transport it away from here afterwards to minimize signage. So that's just something to be mindful of. The bigger the cache, the more dirt you're gonna displace. You're gonna have to find a place to deal with that dirt. Otherwise, that's gonna potentially give away your location. The reason why I'm using my hands is just to be a bit more precise about filling in all those little gaps in there, just so I can get rid of a lot of this dirt that I've displaced. So we're gonna take one of our mossy chunks. We're just gonna put that over there like that. I'm gonna take this chunk. It's not gonna be perfect. Just kind of feather it in. So you can't quite see where the cache is because it blends so seamlessly in the, the surrounding environment. We throw a few leaves on here. You'll never know anything is here. The problem is, is we've now displaced all this dirt and I carelessly was just ejecting dirt all throughout this region. So what that means is I now need to find enough debris to cover this entire region. So even though I have lots of natural concealment over the cache itself, the exterior of the cache is now surrounded in dirt that I need to deal with. All right, guys, so as you can see, we've put all the dirt back. We've made it look as natural as possible. You can never tell that there is a cache of survival supplies buried in here. Look at how natural this looks. And the reason why it looks so natural is because I'm totally bullshitting right now. This is not where we put the cache. If you didn't catch on to that, then you better work on your observation skills. We actually put the cache right over here. So over time, this is gonna grow back. This is gonna look more natural. We put a little bit of debris on there. If you're walking through here, you're not gonna notice anything unless you're really, really looking for something. One thing I would advise is that before you put that duff layer back over top is that you make sure you pack the ground down with your feet. Otherwise, if somebody's coming through here and you didn't pack it down sufficiently, they could sink a little bit. Make them have a second look at what's going on under here. So that's what we've learned today, that we need to find a better way to displace the dirt that we take out. And we also need to make sure that we pack stuff down. Make sure you put it on a slope, mind your landmarks. So we're gonna log our destination on this GPS navigator app. And as you can see here, it gives you the exact coordinates of where this is, but the joke's on you because we're not actually gonna be bearing this in this location today. We're gonna have to dig this up, move it somewhere else because now you all know where my survival cache is. Don't come here or the All-American Prepper is gonna hunt your ass down. All right guys, so let me know what you would put in your survival supply cache. Let me know if you have any other tips and tricks on what you've done in the past. And if you want any of the items that I showed in this video, you can support the channel by going through those links in the description section. Please leave your comments, like, and all the rest. Thanks for watching. Stay safe, Canadian Prepper out. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at CanadianPreparedness.com. The best quality products at the best prices. Use discount code SURVIVALPREPPER, all caps, all one word, for 10% off. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. I know these woods like the back of my ass.